All right. Welcome to another episode of the BU Babe podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Weaver. And today I'm so excited to have Tamarin on. And I'm just going to tell you a little bit about her before she speaks, but she's a global speaker, author, shamanic storyteller, spiritual alchemist, astrologer, and media personality. Tamarin is a shamanic storyteller who loves empowering women to flourish and step into living a more fulfilling legacy to embrace pure joy. As a spiritual alchemist, astrologer, former radio host, and star of the upcoming Burning Karma, I guess, Healing Our Core Mother Wounds Collectively podcast, she has guided hundreds of thousands of women for over 13 years to connect to their soul's voice and own their truth. Oh my God, Tamara, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you. You sounded so excited when you read that, Rachel. It was like, <laughs> whew, okay, we got to take deep breath. I know. It's just... Uh, it's powerful times on the planet here for women oh, right now. So powerful. It really, the collective um, in, in healing our wounds as women and stepping into owning our truth. I think so many, I know I have been afraid to say what I want to say and own who I am and my gifts and to be able to step out into a spotlight and own it is, it's a big thing. It's a big thing. Yeah, it really is like you're breaking um, a traditional barrier and that is going to be the core essence of bringing women onto my show that I want to start in the fall as well because what I'm finding is as I'm working with my clients one-on-one -on -one and speaking to people, we really are um, breaking through a lot of those upbringings that our mothers had for women. Like, yeah. you know, don't talk about your personal life. Don't say yep. that. What will the neighbors think? And what do you mean, uh, you know, you use this and use the woo, that woo-woo stuff and whatever, because it's non-traditional, right? Mm -hmm. You're living in the age of Aquarius. This is all about a humanitarian movement, having compassion and empathy for each other and accepting all of us as who we genuinely are and to not be normal. Normal is not normal. Like if you're normal, then you're missing out. <laughs> you're totally missing out on all the fun. <laughs> oh, I want to talk a little bit about your human design chart really quick because you are a splenic projector. Yeah. Which I think is awesome. Um, you're a three, five and the right cross of the Maya, which I know, you know, um, a lot of astrology. How do you feel about human design? Um, and the aspects of that versus astrology. Yeah, it was so interesting when you sent that information to me and it was like, yeah, like even uh, the word splenic projector, um, I, I completely related to those two concepts right off the bat because as an energy healer myself, way back 20 years ago, when I was in courses and studying, not Reiki, I was studying um, a technique called pranic healing and we had to learn how to read aura, or not auras, we had to learn how to read chakras. Mm. And it was about cleansing chakras through energy and rebalancing whatever. And what kept showing up for me, even back then, was my body uh, was um, always having to work through my spleen because my spleen kept getting yeah. dirty. And so I understand, you know, the bitterness right? Mm -hmm. And as an astrologer, I have a stellium of planets in a very specific area of my chart, which is about um, feeling that bitterness and to have to understand the balance of bitterness, right? Yeah. And so that I related to right off the bat. And then the yeah. fact that the word projector was there was really important because also as an astrologer, I've understood through uh, other teachers that the placement in my chart where my Mars and my sun planets, they're so close together. Mm -hmm. People feel me. And yeah. so I was like, oh, now I understand because depending on who the other person is and what their personal planets are, yep. Um, yep. I have to be very careful because there's a responsibility that comes with that because when I say something, people feel it. And so they, they take action on it. Mm -hmm. So I have to be careful and I never tell someone what to do. It's just a recommendation. 
Mm. because there's there's that fine line there yeah. right like i don't ever want to be responsible for the choices that someone makes yeah but yep. i want to encourage them to learn more about themselves so when oh, you said gosh. that in your chart i was like that is that is me yeah oh my gosh i love that in the three five i mean that's projecting people are projecting onto you especially as a projector to like save me save me and tell me what to do. And you're like, no, <laughs> I can only show you the door you have to walk through. <laughs> yeah. And you have to, you have to be the person who opens that door. Like yeah. that's where, you know, even a couple of years ago, I found when I was helping people and um, sharing some of my gifts, just as I was learning astrology and hadn't even become certified at that point, people would be calling me and messaging me and going, oh, what do I do about this? What do I do about that? And I'd be like, uh, I can't answer you, um, <laughs> but I can encourage you on what you need to feel as an yeah. alchemist so that you draw that in. Yeah. And that is yeah. the key message. It really is. It's not what we do. It's not what's in the mind. And that's that traditional era that we're moving out of. It's not about what's up here. It's about yeah. what's in here. Yeah. What's in our what heart. Feel? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I, I so relate to that. I feel like copy is all about the head and how can you strategize and how can you persuade and use all these different things in order to make someone do what you want them to do, right? When yeah. I'm like, no, we need to flip it on its head. And it's, it's about sharing your gifts. It's about owning who you are. It's about really understanding what you are here to do. And then those people that need your work will want your work and want to work with you, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely, Rachel. And you're right. Um, and this might show up in my chart too. I think I read something in there that I really run on my intuition mm -hmm. a lot. Yep. Yep. And um, for many years, I was... Um, I was criticized for that and called crazy and, mm. oh, she's out there and I don't know what she's talking about. Like there was this whole attitude. And for a long time, I shut that off because I didn't yeah. understand the things I was saying to someone. People would be looking at me like, how do you know that? It was my intuition was so strong and I didn't know that was my intuition. I didn't know it. And it wasn't until I started learning some of yeah. these new age and holistic practices yeah. in these different communities that are mainly taught by women, mm -hmm. right? That I realized that I had to get, I had a gift, but then I had to learn how to use it. Kind of like what you were saying is, you know, so a lot of that was understanding how to have healthy, energetic boundaries. Yeah. And it's yeah. a daily practice to, 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 to keep that in place. Absolutely. I think it's a daily practice, no matter what your energy type is or astrology is, you have to decondition all the things that you've learned throughout your life as, you know, growing up as a child. And then just to keep your energy clear now from what's happening collectively and the, with the people around you and to stay connected to your own intuition in a deeper, deeper way. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about how you got here to astrology. <laughs> wow. It wasn't, it wasn't like a straight line. Let nope. me tell you that. <laughs> Success is never a straight line. No. No. It's crazy. It was all over the place. I'm going to be honest and say astrology is the latest tool that I've added into my toolbox as a healer. Mm. But when I did study astrology, there were so many things I learned about myself that I knew, but it was almost as if no one had ever, ever given me permission to allow that part of myself to blossom. Mm. It was very, very validating. And yeah. um, as someone who I'm like, even in my astrology chart, I'm a nerd. <laughs> I am a total nerd. <laughs> and if I a, pay for something, I want my money's worth. Mm -hmm. And because I don't buy a lot of things. Um and when I dove into the world of astrology, I realized that a lot of things that I was wanting early in my life, like even as a teenager, had manifested by becoming an astrologer. And here's a great example. 
I remember sitting in high school and I think it was about 15 or 16 years old. And I was fascinated by science and math. Like I went to the, I'm Canadian. So we had like the basic level of, of all classes were like what they called the level four. And if you were an advanced student, you got put into a level five. I took all level five maths and sciences of everything in phys ed that I could take in high school, right? English, not so much. I barely passed English. I think I got a 51. I wasn't into geography and history. Like you mm -hmm. had to take those courses and whatever. But as I got into the higher grades, I really wanted to um, like alter things. I was fascinated by genetic engineering. And I remember sitting in class saying to myself, wow, I remember that moment watching the teacher write all the stuff on the blackboard and saying, yeah, if I could get paid for learning, that would yeah. be a dream job for me. Yeah. And so when I became an astrologer, I had that memory and I realized this constant learning and evolving as what happens every single day in astrology, because astro every day the planets are, there's yeah. something different. Every day is a new astrological story. And how can someone interpret that in a way that's personal so that we can understand it? Yeah. And that is my gift. So that I don't, gift. I don't talk astrology. I just say to people, you know, this might happen this week and this is how you can feel or not feel. And yeah. you have to make that choice, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where the transformation is. This is where that spiritual shift is. And so mm -hmm. I found for me as an astrologer, that's how I'm using it. But not all astrologers will use the information the same way because every astrologer is a different type of an astrologer. Yeah. Some people are going to want to tell you your future and all that. I go, no, I'm not here to tell you that. Mm -mm. Because you can change, you can, someone can say something to you and you go, oh, that's not what I want right? Because you have choice, you have free yeah. will. Mm -hmm. um, but in astrology, there's collective things happening that maybe not so much we can choice, but it's how are we going to um, respond to it as opposed to reacting to it? Oh, yeah. I love that. I mean, I'm all about how is life, how are you responding to life and not reacting to it, but just allowing and going, oh, this is interesting now what? <laughs> and not getting upset and falling apart because something's, you know, someone did something or whatever, said something. Um, how are you feeling about the astrology just happening right now? I know the eclipse, we were talking a little bit about this before we hit record. Um, I want to talk about it more because it feels really interesting to me. And I don't know a ton about astrology, but what I'm understanding now is that it's it's like with the eclipse season, you're being called even more to your purpose work. And I definitely Absolutely. feel that. I feel a lot of like, pull your bootstraps up, Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> find your confidence, find your power and stand in it. Quit fucking pussyfooting around. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is, you're right. That is the energy that I was sharing on, on my social media last mm -hmm. week. Last week was all about courage and what I'm feeling this week for people with this solar eclipse that happened over the weekend on that new moon, because the new moon is in Taurus. In mm -hmm. Taurus, the sun and the moon are together when it's a new moon, okay? So it's a very introverted time when the sun and the moon are together. When it's the full moon, it's when the planets are in opposition by 180 degrees. And so we get super emotional around the full moon. We could be crying a lot and whatever. Yeah. But a new moon is very introspective. It's very personal. Yeah. And what's happening with that energy right now, because it's an eclipse, it has to do with the poles, the polarity of the moon. And I don't want mm -hmm. to talk too much of astrology, but what it means is something can flip, mm -hmm. something can flip and just turn our lives upside down. But again, it really is about this week is about using the energy of like joy and, um, and curiosity and like, kind of like that energy of like the image I was sharing with people was a little child, like a little toddler coming down on Christmas morning 
and waking up and seeing like the tree all lit up, all sparkling, glowing and tons of presents under the tree yeah. and all wrapped up and the kids under there and he's allowed to open his present and he opens the first present and it's like, oh, wow, this is what I've always wanted. Who knew how to give this to me? I didn't, it just, someone just knew. And then they have permission to keep opening more gifts. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> like I'm getting everything I wanted and it's that energy of the joy and that yeah. inner child and that excitement. And that is the energy that if we embrace this week, a lot of people are going to be able to just literally step into that big dream that they've had for so long and things that they've actually wanted. And it's just going to be like, how did that happen? Mm. Like the universe is just going to open up for us. But again, it doesn't always show up in the package that we want, that we think right. it's going to show up. It might right. show up in a different package, but that's the reality, right? And yeah. so I encourage people, the more you can work on what you're feeling and really embrace that, because last week it took us courage to really say what we needed to say or to take action in some way mm -hmm. on something that we just felt like we were drawn to do and we didn't know why, and we just did it anyway. Mm -hmm. And then this week, you know, we're going to start to feel the result of that and then just see if we keep taking action and trusting your intuition, even if it doesn't make sense, Rachel, I'm encouraging people, Yeah. don't yeah. look for the logic. Mm -hmm. Just if it feels right in your heart, say it, do it, whatever. It doesn't even have to be big. It's just see what happens next, because yeah. that's that joy and that wonder that is going to allow us to shift with this um, partial eclipse. Yeah. And I feel, I'm feeling that a lot in my business right now with a few different opportunities and different uh, ways to partner with people. And it's making me go, wait, this isn't what I thought I was supposed to be doing right now. Wait, <laughs> yeah. I know that this, it all feels really easy. It's like an easy, yes. It's an easy, like, oh, this is going to be so much fun to do. Like, why wouldn't I do it? Um, yeah, but yeah, at the same time, my mind is going, wait, no, you said you were going to do this last month, hold to your word, but it's all my mind, even though like I, as a manifesting generator, I know that like, I can respond to life. I can change my mind whenever the hell I want to. I can <laughs> decide that like, oh, something shows up in my, in my world and I can shift, I can change. And that's what it feels like right now. It feels like this shift and this change. Um, and am, am I willing to go with the flow? Am I willing to just kind of have fun with it, play with it? That's just it. And that's the message I was telling people on the weekend is we have to turn our mind off right now. Yeah. Yeah. We have to, because there's so much happening and it's like we're being bombarded by so much. And so the best way is to just close your eyes mm -hmm. and, and feel, feel what you want to feel yeah. and then trust your intuition on what it's telling you to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you talk to someone that's like, I am not used to trusting my intuition. I'm scared to trust it. How do yeah. you well, one of the clues is it won't be logical. <laughs> That's clue number one. Right? Dang it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, if it doesn't feel logical, then I think you're on the right track. The second yeah. way to really do it is to, you know, this practice of, like I say, is to like tap on your heart because this is mm -hmm. where intuition actually comes from. It's not coming from here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It comes from here. Yeah. And part of a daily practice, which I've been doing well, for over 20 years now, is um, a morning meditation that I do where I was trained on how to, the first thing I do once I close my eyes and take three deep breaths is to tap on my heart. And I draw in a memory into my heart that gives me a sense of validation and courage and almost like a, like a deeper meaning. Mm -hmm. of why I'm here as, mm. as, as a woman and as a mother. 
And that is like that mama bear energy coming out. It, like it just gives you the courage yeah. to do what you know you need to do and to stand up for. And so I hold that energy in my heart. And then I listen to the meditation throughout whatever. It's a short meditation. But by the end, I make sure I always have my journal nearby. I mean, here's even today, you know, my journal nearby with my pen. And whatever I hear, mm. I write it down because it can go like that. Right. And I yeah. give myself this time and then I can look at it later. But like, even for example, yesterday, like I wrote down, you know, mm, you know, I have to do this first, like do this first. So sometimes I might have a list of things that I need to do, but my issues, my tuition said to me, no, this is number one, your number one priority today. Yeah. Right? It's the, it's a priority. Those other things need to get done, but it's not it's not going to move the needle as far. And do I know why? I have no idea, but yeah. that's what I heard. And so I wrote it down and then I take action on it. Mm -hmm. I love that your process starts with you going within um, and validation comes from within, especially as a projector, you feel that validation of who you are, what you're meant to do, your gifts before you even do anything. And before I, yeah, before I yeah. talk to anybody else, the relationship anything. that yep. I need to have is yep. with me. Yep. Yep. I love, 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 love that. Um, so beautiful. How do you feel about the astrology moving into the next few months? Cause this, um, we're talking in early May, this is like the first week of May when we're talking, um, right. this episode won't come out for another <laughs> month. Um, <laughs> What about the astrology moving forward in the next month to six weeks? Buckle your seatbelts. No, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I predict, and it's not just for me because I study other astrologers. Like, yeah, to be an astrologer, you have to still learn from other astrologers. So I listen. That's my Sunday practice. It's my day off, right? Mm -hmm. I do whatever I want on Sundays because I'm someone who used to be a workaholic. Um, so now I have this balanced lifestyle and, you know, I'm not perfect, you know, I fall off things or whatever, but I like to sit down and see what other people are predicting so that I can make notes and I can adjust accordingly as well. But every astrologer that I've been learning from is because of these eclipses and things that are happening a lot to do with the planets that are sitting in the sign of Taurus right now, yep. which is where this eclipse just happened. We're going to have four eclipses this year and they're all going to be in Taurus and Scorpio. Ooh. So. Taurus is all about our sensuality, our food, you know, looking after the yep, earth, yep. being responsible. Um, and Scorpio is that deep healing, you know, mm -hmm. that deep, heavy emotional healing that we can all experience. And um, so with that in mind, the message I want everybody to understand is if you're willing to do the work on yourself and not worry about everybody else and really trust yourself and take, you know, start these practices to trust your intuition, then your life is going to feel very magical and mm -hmm. almost mystical yeah. this year because it's going to be like, how did that just happen? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it is, it won't be like, how do I say like someone saying something to you and you go run and you ask all your friends, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? Mm -hmm. That is not what I would mm -hmm. recommend anybody does no. because you cannot let anybody else's ideas or, or realities get into your reality. So it's like, yeah. you need to have these practices because we are in this age of Aquarius and it's very new still. And the age of Aquarius really is about tapping into a higher level of consciousness and so the way through that is yeah. by learning to meditate and to mm -hmm. open this part of the brain that's been turned off for like, you know, so many lifetimes for so many people. Yeah. And when we go in that part of our mind and then connect to our heart, we get these intuitive downloads. And so that's how we act on it. I love it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So actually, um, 
what I started doing, I did this, I did this last summer and then I had a tornado whip through Northern Ontario where I leave and where I live, pardon me. And I had a lot of things go crazy and whatever, but in my uh, meditation, I guess about a month ago now, I got the intuitive download to start writing little daily spiritual messages to people. So mm. I decided it was time to get on LinkedIn, Instagram, yep. and Facebook. And what I do now every day is I sit early in the morning mm -hmm. and I connect with the planet of the day, right? So today is we're, we're recording this on a Tuesday. So the energy of today is represented by Mars. Okay. So Mars okay. Uh, is the planet for Tuesday and where the moon is because the moon represents our subconscious and what we're feeling, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I've been writing these messages again every day and encouraging people to spend at least 22 minutes and I make a little recommendation. So I sit in meditation, I connect with the planets and I'd be like, okay, what message can I give people today? So every single day I post these on social media and I call them my daily owl notes. Oh, I love And that. it's just intuitive wisdom because... I yeah. am a little bit wiser. <laughs> I'm not so young anymore. I've been around the block <laughs> a few times and I have some of the most powerful stories of transformation where people are like, how did you know how to do that? And I go, I didn't know how to do anything. I just heard it in my intuition. So I did it. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, so and powerful. we have to have this practice now. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's not, it's not going to gurus anymore. It's not looking to other people to tell us, spiritual leaders or whoever. Um, we have to be able to do this for ourselves. We have to be able to hear our own intuition and trust it and follow through with confidence. Wow. Yeah. Absolutely. Even dreams. Like <laughs> lately, my dreams have been so profound. And a lot of times I wake up in the middle of the night. That's what my journal is like right beside my bed. I write down things in the middle of the night and I just fall back asleep. And then I wake up the next day and I be or in the morning and I'm like, whoa, good thing I wrote that down in the middle of the night because <laughs> I don't remember that oh, now wow. that I'm up. Wow. I, that's great. I've had wild dreams the last few nights. I thought it was maybe because I was a little sick and it was making my head a little crazy, but I don't really remember. They're just weird and bizarre. Yeah. Well, dream work is our subconscious, right? So it is yeah. our connection to the moon. Um, and even for me, I have uh, full moon gatherings that I do online with right. women. They're free. It's my gift, right? And anybody can join from anywhere in the world. But um, I bring out a deck of dream cards that were created by an elderly friend of mine. And mm -hmm. they're based on NLP. So whatever is happening in your dream, is con it's your subconscious. It is connected to what's happening in the real life. And the cards that she created help us interpret those dreams. Mm -hmm. And they're That's just so questions cool. you ask. And it makes people hair stand up and then they go... When people first try them, they're like, oh, these don't work. These don't work. And then they read them and then they go, how, how? did that relate? And I go, because it's connected. It's all connected. So like cool. we're not, as human beings, we think we're like so unique, but really the reality is, Rachel, I don't think so. No, we're so connected. We're, like, yeah. yeah, I just got chills all the way up my spine. Like we are. It's like. Yeah. We're connected uh, to a higher power. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. a field, whatever you want to call it. Like there's something that unseen that connects all of us and everything, everything. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, well tell my audience, I would love, I think my audience is going to want to know even more about you and how to find you, how to work with you, all the things. So tell me all about what your, your offers are right now. Sure. Um, well, the best thing I like to do, Rachel, is get to know me a little bit. Do yeah. what's free. So follow me on social media. Yeah. Right. Um, on Instagram, my handle is Northern Alchemist 888. Simple mm -hmm. and easy. I'm an alchemist, yep. but I live in Northern Ontario. And so <laughs> that's how I came up with that. I like it. And on that, that's the same little daily owl note that I put on Instagram, or pardon me, I also put on my LinkedIn profile and my Facebook blog and my women's community circle. Now, but my women's community circle is main, that's my Facebook group that I just launched, but that's geared for women who um, are 55 plus 
and okay. who maybe would like to consider working with me one-on-one -on -one as a private client. Because mm -hmm. as what I know from my own astrology birth chart is um, I'm like the therapist. Like I have a Libra rising. That's yeah. a therapist, yeah. right? Yeah. So people always want me one-on-one. -on -one. They don't want the group stuff. And as much mm -mm. as I try to do it, it just mm -mm. never manifests. People yep. want me whatever. So um, I do have a six-month program that is geared for women that are 55 plus and are really wanting to understand a little bit more about their birth chart. They might actually know some astrology or they enjoy astrology, but they want someone to interpret it for them and give them those secret clues right away. And I can say, if you just spend time doing this, I guarantee mm -hmm. you're going to have a huge shift in your life. And this mm -hmm. is all based on what I call time. So it's about how we're spending our time. Mm. And so I say to people, if you spend at least 22 minutes every single day doing this, then I guarantee your vibe is going to shift. As my sense is the millennial mom, it's all about the vibe. And I'm <laughs> like, okay, I'm going to use that little slogan for you guys. Continue but vibe. in someone, yeah, in someone's birth chart, there's a secret message in there. Yeah. And there it's is. unique to yeah. everyone. Yep. And so I have the knowledge to look at that because that's what I specialize in. And I say, if you do this for at least 22 minutes a day, it mm -hmm. might feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. it, you might already be doing it, but that is you like following your North star. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's the, it's the road less traveled. Mm -hmm. But what happens is when you spend time doing this because you are really deep down going to enjoy it. There's going to be like, oh, why do I love this? Mm -hmm. That opens the heart more. And so you're yeah. coming from this deep place of divine love. And then the magic starts to happen in your life because we're attracting things because of this divine love. And then new doors and opportunities start to happen in your life. And what happened, and the outcome is that is even another step of magic is the logical and the comfortable things that you re originally wanted to do are going to appear. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's flipped, right? Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. can look at that. So I love working with women um, who want to do that. And again, like I say, they get the private coaching and then they come to all the group events. They can come to the full moon gatherings, which again is free or it's a free gift to anybody listening. I can share the link for your listeners. They just joined my newsletter and it's just strictly a reminder on cool. what day and time, the exact night before the full moon, because it's the yep. online gathering where is as I'm traveling around, I'll be offering the full moon gatherings live in person in small cool. groups. Cool. And we do some little magic tricks and woo woo stuff, just fun I things, right? That. Do I, I have that. templates that I've created for women to use? And I go, if you just follow this, you know, it'll work. It's just a practice you have to use. Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah. So I just yeah. say to people, start with the easy stuff, follow me on social media. If you like what I'm posting every day, I'm just encouraging people to take action on how to begin trusting their intuition. Yeah. And then you can always reach out through me to me through social media. Oh, I love that. And we'll put all the links in the show notes. Um, I love moon circles. I have a good friend of mine that runs, or she did pre-COVID. Um, we did moon circles before then and slowly trying to get it back to come back, but she does. It's so amazing to be in a room full of women on the full moon and just in ceremony to it, really. Um, yeah. It's, and that's what it's about. It's, it's yeah. just about the joining of energy. Mm -hmm. And empowering and lifting each other up. And I mean, it's, it's powerful. It's so good. Um, yeah. Love it. Well, well, you'll have to come out to my virtual one. Yeah. It's yeah, always the night will. before the full moon. Okay. Every single month. Awesome. Definitely will. Definitely will. Anything else that you want to share? Well, let me see. It's now <laughs> my, it's now May, you say by June. Mm -hmm. I think the big message that I am sharing everywhere on social media and even in my private messages is this, and it still goes back to everything we talked about today. If you spend at least 22 minutes every single day, enjoying what you absolutely love to do. And for everyone, that's going to be different. You're changing yeah. your vibe. Yeah. Yeah. 
And you have to admit what that truth is. Like and then for I think me, that's the hard part. Yeah. Yeah. When I studied my birth chart, I was really fascinated by this signature, right? And that is where also, oh, and so also what I've done in the past year is I had to find a way to do readings for people, especially the millennials. Like I have two millennial boys who are now young men, right? Yeah. And yeah. through COVID, I haven't had the chance to spend time with them. But what I realized is that when you're younger, there are powerful messages that someone can learn from their own astro astrological birth chart that can actually help them um, blossom them, as opposed to being told who they need to be or should be or go get a job and whatever. And I realized that yeah. some of us need to go make income somehow to survive but there's still a part of us that needs to blossom into yeah. like really you know become who our biggest potential to be who we are meant to be so my two boys have actually been helping me to create a way where i could take all the data and the research that i need to do for a reading because it usually takes rachel three to four hours to study yeah. someone's initial birth chart put all the data out and then connect with him and whatever. So I'm like, how do I streamline this to mm -hmm. help more people? That, that was just something that was on my mind. And again, I didn't know why it yep. was my intuition yep. telling me this. And so it's only been in the last month now where my sons have been, ha have created a way for me where I can go onto the astrology site, take their information and create a digital guidebook. No way from their yeah. specifics. Yes, with all their specific information, and I created in Canva, so it's living and breathing, and they get the link. It's wow. only one hundred and twenty-six dollars Canadian, Rachel. So oh for Americans, God. it's like it's nothing. dirt cheap, dirt cheap, and it gives you and it gives you your special twenty-two minute message. That's your secret remedy. So I have to sit and meditate on the chart, but it comes to me. And now I can do that for people at an affordable price. And even for millennials, people that mm. are, you know, maybe wanting to go to school or not wanting to go back to school and just saying, do yeah. I need to go to university or college or now? Because in astrology, all that stuff's coming down. Like um, any yeah. kind of system in the world is coming down over the next couple of years. <sighs> I think it's going to be our medical system, our government systems, yep. our like all the systems, school systems mm -hmm. are coming down so that we can live a completely different lifestyle where we are more aligned yep. and using the yep. power of the internet yep. to communicate, work and, you know, have hybrid positions or only work online or work in, yep. you know, the retail brick and mortar business it's going to be a choice yeah but i think people are going to be a lot happier especially if they understand their information from their astrology chart mm -hmm. oh right? i want to do that for my kids my husband <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you for 126 bucks, like, yeah. mo I mean, this will come out after Mother's Day, but I started posting online the other night for 126 bucks um, for a Mother's Day gift. That's totally unique, right? That's so incredible. I love yeah. that so much. And my boys have helped me do it. I had the millennials help me because they understand technology. And what I thought was going to take months to do, my son did it. Rachel, are you ready? In like two 10 days. 10 minutes. <laughs> he created, I said, I, this is what I want. <laughs> Can you make it do this? And he looked at me and he goes, yeah. Du, 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 du. And he's on Zoom and he's like, okay, I'm done. I'm like, what? And then I'm like, as a, as a mom, I'm like, oh boy, my university, the portion I had to pay for my child, I just got the payback. Right. Um, so it's easy. So you can start there too. You can follow yeah. me. You can purchase yeah. the book. Maybe that's all you ever do. But you know, some of that information I've changed people's lives just from that's amazing. Just from giving them a message from their chart reading. Oh, that's incredible. And they go, how do you know it. that? I go, because it's part of your soul. Mm -hmm. It's a part mm -hmm. of you, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. And then it's the elderly women that, I want to say elderly, but women that are ready for a more fulfilled lifestyle that I work with privately one-on-one. -on -one. Because what I do with that is that's part of the alchemy program is we work through the birth chart together for six months, but then I also get into my 13 years background as a holistic coach, like a health coach. Mm -hmm. And I have training in buckler essences and essential mm -hmm. oils, and things like yeah. that. So your chart tells me, believe it or not, your chart can tell me 
what exact essential oils are going to help you transform mm. some of these deep emotional issues? Because we can swing to positive or negative or negative to positive, just depending on the challenges we have, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then also with Bach flower essences, it's the same thing. I have extended training in that. I've pulled people out of being suicidal, heavily depressed, all kinds of stuff. It's just knowing it's what to give someone and yep. teaching them how to use it. So I'll recommend mm. the remedies and I give them samples and then we work together and then I just allow the magic to happen. I just yeah. watch because we're, we're working on that emotional body yeah. and then things just start to magically happen for people. Oh, right? that's so cool. Oh, I yeah. Love, so it's I a love combo it. of it. all of my trainings put together. All the things. Oh, so incredible. And I think the, that generation 55 plus, I guess it's a couple of different, but, um, really has been entrenched in the systems they yes. haven't questioned they this mother wound healing yeah this the mother is wound healing. the basis of my radio podcast that i want to yep. do because i've been on yep. the radio for so many years before and what i started to recognize in myself is you know breaking through these these beliefs that our mothers had and our grandmothers had mm -hmm. and Women mm -hmm. being to, told to just do what you're told and, yep. you know, don't say anything and don't question anything and don't have a dream. And, yep. you know, you're just a mother and it's your job just to like raise a family and whatever. No, we're so much more than so that. Much more. And so we can do, we can do other things. It doesn't mean we give up being mothers at all. Yeah. No. And it doesn't make you any worse a mother or a bad mother or an unattentive mother, any of those things, because you have, you've retained your power and your, your authenticity and who you are. Yeah. yeah. And you were, and you're a role model for your children for 100%. this next generation. hundred percent. Yeah, not passing the shit on to my daughter. Uh-uh. No. You gotta help them <laughs> gotta help them with breaking through those old mindsets, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and that is a big part of Age of Aquarius. Again, that's what you're talking about for two is this part. It's the intuition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. someone told me to do this, but why do I feel like I gotta go and do that? <laughs> yeah. And I've always been like, I've looked at you know, you're telling me to do this, but I'm like, but why, why do I have to do that? Why can't I do it another way? Why, why does it have to be this way? And exactly. when you can't give me an answer, then I'm like, oh, hails no. <laughs> Definitely yeah, exactly. going in the other direction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And having that support, you know, mm -hmm. having other people who understand yeah. what it's like, because if you're surrounded by those people and they may be your family and your best friends yeah. and your loved ones, it's yeah. hard initially in the beginning because you feel like there's so much conflict yeah. And it can create anger and things, you know, being said and misled. But if you're in a supportive place where you can do this, whether it's online or doing yeah. events or whatever, you're yeah. going to feel like you actually belong somewhere and that mm -hmm. you feel validated. And then once mm -hmm. you become happier on the inside, those people around you that were giving you so much hassle before, they'll see how happy you are and they'll be like, can you tell me what you did? What do you, what do you do? What's going on here? <laughs> How, did, how come you're so happy? Can I have some uh, of whatever well, you're doing? <laughs> exactly, right? It's like, you know, it's, it's yeah. a daily practice. Yeah, daily practice. Oh, I love it. Oh, Tamara, what an amazing conversation. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, it has been a delight. Absolutely. Yes. delight. Well, thank you so much, Rachel, for jumping out and offering for me to be a guest on your show because I was ready to be on other people's shows <laughs> and it's you were fun. the first person to respond. So I was like, yes. And then having you do, what do you call my chart again? What did you call that? A uh, Your human design chart or your projector? Human design. Yeah. yeah. Human design. And that yeah. really validated the astrology. So yeah. 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 And they do really validate each other. I don't know a ton about my own astrology, but whenever like my business coach is into astrology and so she reads my astrology chart and I'm like, oh, well, it totally makes sense. But yeah. Um, yeah. So they definitely correlate and there are threads that are very similar, but I find it super fascinating that they kind of, depending on how you want to interpret it or how you want, um, what you're needing help with, 
you'll resonate with one or the other is what I found. Like one, either the astrology chart will be like, oh, this is exactly what I've been looking for. And it deeply resonates or human design will, you know, one, yeah. but they both can really point you to your North star and really show you that blueprint of like where you're supposed to be going and what you're here to do yeah. and meaning and purpose and all those things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you, my dear. All right. Well, have a great, uh, great week. All right. You too. All right. Thanks, Bye. Rachel. <laughs>